To download Python, go to python.org. In the download section, you see the latest version available to download. At the time I'm recording this video, it is Python 3.7.1. If you see something different here, you shouldn't worry. As long as it is Python 3, there won't be big differences between our versions. So you can just choose whatever latest version you see here. Then roll down to the bottom of the page. Let's choose the x86-64 executable installer. Just click it to start downloading it. When the download finishes, just click on it to start the installer. The first thing we need to do is selecting this box that says Add Python 3.7 to Path. I'm going to explain what it does in a moment. Next, just click Customize Installation so we can check if everything's correct. You can leave all these boxes selected, but most importantly the ones for pip and for idle. pip is a package installer and idle is the development environment we're going to use in the first lessons of the course. Then click Next. Here you can leave all the default options as they are. What I like to do is changing the install location. If you place it on C slash Python 3.7, it's going to be way easier to find it later. To finish, click Install. This is going to take around 2 minutes, so I'll just stop the video and come back here when it finishes. Now I'm going to show you a couple of ways of running Python. On Windows, press the Windows button plus the R key to open the Run command. Then type CMD and hit enter to enter the command line. Remember the box we checked that said add python 3.7 to path? This means that no matter what directory we're in in the command line, we can just type python and it is going to run. Every time we see these three greater than symbols, it means we are inside a python interpreter, so we can write python code and it is going to be executed. For the first example, Let's do a very basic math operation. Just try typing 2 plus 3 and hit enter. As you can see, Python made the calculation and printed the result, which is 5. We can also display a message on screen by typing print, opening parentheses, opening quotation marks, and typing a message, like hello world. Don't forget to close the quotation marks and the parentheses and hit enter. Don't worry about the syntax right now. In the next lessons, I'm going to teach you when and why you should use those symbols. If you want to quit Python, just type quit, open and close parentheses, and hit enter. Now, we just jumped out of the interpreter, and we're back to the command line. Okay, so now you know one way of running Python. But this is not the environment we're going to use in the course. I want you to know Python's built-in integrated development and learning environment, also known as IDLE. Let me show you where can you find it. Go to the Windows menu, click the search button and search for IDLE. Instead of opening it, right-click on it and choose Open File Location. With the IDLE selected, hit Ctrl-C to copy it. Next, right-click on your desktop and choose Paste Shortcut. It's important to do this because we're going to use it a lot in the first lessons of the course. So having a shortcut on our desktop will make it a lot easier to open it. As you can see, we have those three greater than symbols. This means we're inside a Python interpreter. Let's try to do that same operation again. This is pretty much the same thing we had before, but we have some interesting tools to work with Python programs. For example, we can create a new program by going to File, New File. Here, we can write multiple lines of code. So let's try to display a message by typing print, open in parentheses, now remember the quotation marks, which can also be single quotation marks. We use it every time we type text but this is going to be further explained later. Let's write my first Python program. On the next line, 
Let's print our math operation, 2 plus 3. Note that when we are in the interpreter, we can just type the operation and it will show us the result below. When we're writing a Python program, we must always use the print function when we want to display something. As this is a number, not text, we don't need to use quotation marks. This is going to be very clear when we talk about data types. Now go to File, Save. For now, I'll just save it in the desktop. I'll name it test.py, which is the extension you must use for your Python programs. We can now run our program by going to run, run module, which can also be done by pressing F5. Our program will then run inside the idle. So here, the code we just wrote has been executed. If you want to go back to editing your file, just click the idle icon in the task panel and open it. All right, now we have Python installed and running in our computer. We just wrote our first lines of code and we learned how to create a Python program. So we are ready to do more advanced stuff. I'll see you in the next video.